Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Swig It In 3. This is Banner Ryu. And Karana Shizumi. Now, generally, you would grind the living shit out of the dark hairs here. Like, you can you can actually get really overpowered. You also have no choice but to go to Korea Village. I can't even... I can't commit... I can't control anything. So yeah, the village is on fire. And it's black smoke. Yeah, that would be uh, wood burning. Yeah, yeah. A disaster. He's so funny. And I look, now the portrait changed. Because Shin is now serious. He's no longer smiling. And look, there he goes. Like, who goes off on their own when the village is on fire? Also, Joe's doing the same thing. So now we're alone. Yeah, w literally, what about our peace treaty? But you will notice that now it's just me and Fubar. So that's wonderful. Best team anyway. I mean, yeah. I mean, I love Joe, but best team. Oh, no. Yeah, that's not good. Someone's dead. Yep. And now Joe's in our party. And yep, village is on fire. In fact, it's... And everyone's dead. And there's Chris. It's not a good picture. Not at all. Especially because she looks angry. So now that, taken out of context, is pretty bad. It, I mean, she's there. And Lulu is dead. <laughs> yeah. So dramatic. Holy shit. Look at this slow-mo. Now, right before this, you can take off his equipment at the save point. Um, it sells for pretty well. Uh, definitely take off his lunchbox. Why didn't you do that? Uh, I don't need to. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, you got Asian I have egg. so much money coming to me <laughs> later. It does not matter. But, um, yeah. Chris? So, this is one of the things that I really like about 3. Now, you don't often hear me say that. Because, <laughs> yeah, obviously... Yeah, I know. 5 is the best. Obviously, 5 is the best. But, but, but... One of the things I really like about 3 is the way that it tells the story. So, one of the reasons that drives my boyfriend up the fucking wall is that I'm always like, I like video games for the story! And he's like, but that's not why you're supposed to play video games. And they're supposed to be fun and entertaining. You know, like, the story is second, blah, blah, no, blah. No, what? I'm completely the opposite. Well, yes and no, but... I'm not going to get into it. Anyway, point is, is I really like stories when it comes to any form of media. I don't care what type of media. I like games for the same reason. I don't really care so much about the gameplay. I like the actual plot and stuff. He's dead. <laughs> yes. But for us to then go to Chris, well, did you see that turnaround? Yeah. Holy shit, that was some cinematic, like... It gets better, too. Some cinematic shit, yo. Do not say you'll pay dearly. <laughs> I've learned that the hard way. Uh, you will get into a fight you cannot win, and it basically forces you into a game over. And I'm talking about, I grinded to level 30, and I still got my ass handed to me in two turns. Like, it is not... But why is, like, fair? But again, it was, it's the heat of battle. Like, she was already tense, and Lulu just charged at her with a knife. And, like, his portrait has changed three times. Like, yeah. they've... Oh my god. So, we don't, obviously we don't know what happened. Yep. Why is she here? What's she doing this for? We don't understand her statements. Like, we don't even understand her posture. Like, it, it is all very confusing and doesn't make sense. So one of the things that I really love about this game is that instead of us learning about why or what's going on many, 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 many scenes later down the road, instead, we're actually going to learn about why pretty much right now mm -hmm. um because we're gonna end hugo's chapter and then start chris's chapter and the way of getting like everybody's point of view is just so fantastic because even when you go back to the other characters chapters and you have this other knowledge it doesn't really change like too much like it changes things a little bit but it, i don't know how to explain it you guys will see I just think that the that the moving in between storylines... It's called story branched in-character storytelling. It's, as an it's fantastic. It's fantastic. That's what it is. Now, I know that I keep drawing parallels to this. In the manga, uh, they're met by a wandering lizard soldier that tells them that the rest of the Koreas went to uh, the lizard clan for refuge through hidden passages. And what we should do is we should find that passage. I have no idea... 
uh, why it, it was told that way because it sort of skips out on key figures for some reason. But this is necessary for a lot of reasons. The way that the game is telling this, not the, the manga. So it's like, this is literally Hugo's entire turning point. Like, he, d he didn't know how he felt about being the chief's son. He didn't know about being the responsibility of going to the Zexans and fucking being you know, a representative. Like, and now, when it really mattered, he couldn't do anything. And he has to deal with that for the rest of the game. Yeah, it's like, it's not like you could have done anything. I, this is one of the reasons why I love Joe. Okay, because anybody else in this situation would have been like, nah, man, it's cool, it's not your fault, you know what I mean? But no, Joe does more than that. Joe is like, what are you talking about? Stop being so arrogant. Like, like he's literally like, boy, that is not your place. Like, it is fantastic because it, it goes one step further. It's not even just it wasn't your fault or you couldn't have done something. It's you didn't have the skills that wasn't, you know, even remotely possible for you and how dare you think so highly of yourself that you could have changed it it's like no you have to accept the fact that you couldn't have because you couldn't have period that's the way life was and like i don't know i just feel like his like point blank attitude is so refreshing really for this kind of game because we always see even now in modern day video games it's like Oh, it wasn't your fault. Like, you couldn't have done anything, you know, blah, blah, blah. And Joe needs to say this to Hugo because Hugo needs to act like... A chief son. Yeah, he needs... Like a he, warrior. He basically needs to not show any... Because if he gets into other clansmen that are stragglers or survivors, he can't look like he just lost his best friend. Right. He has to think of... He has to think of the village and not his own self. And that's what Joe is basically telling him right now. Like, you need to step it up because it's only gonna get harder from here on out. Yeah. Especially because at this point, we don't know what happened to Lucia. Yeah. So- We don't even could, know if everyone's she could alive. Be dead, yeah. Right? But so, that is yeah. the end of Hugo's first chapter. Yes. And I'm gonna take a minute to save because the way that I'm going to be handling the story is I'm going to be creating separate save files specifically for each character. The reason I'm doing this is because there is going to be times where I'm going to need to specifically cancel out of a chapter to check something. And it's and like if I had better notes for this game, it would be different, but I don't. So that's how this shit's gonna have to go down. But now, and since we have like 10 minutes, I'm going to start Chris's chapter one. Um, this title of this chapter is still going to be uh, a Hugo episode. It's still basically going to be centered around him. But I'm basically gonna get Chris started because there's a lot of micromanagement bullshit that I have to do as Chris. Now, let me, uh, so let me reiterate, this is now before anything in Chris and in, in Hugo's chapter one. Nothing has happened yet. The Grasslands haven't struck a peace treaty yet. The This is all back basically to where Hugo was still at Grasslands. Yeah. Basically you can just Actually think this about is them. even before. This right, is before right. he is his but chapter. You can basically Sorry. think about everything with like a starting a new chapter is basically starting over fresh from the timeline. Uh -huh. We're not picking up where the last event happened. We're picking up fresh from where the characters events happened. Uh -huh. So yeah, and I just love that first line where she's like a victory parade, how arrogant the council is. So obviously she doesn't like the council. And that's, that's sort of like, you'll see right here that there's a stigma between the Zexing Council and the Zexing Knights. Right. They do not get along. In fact, they disagree on a lot of shit. Almost everything, really. And I mean, this is kind of showing the political side of these games. The Because the, that's what Suikoden does really well, is it shows you kind of the political aspect of these wars. And um, this is basically that, too. Like, the, the army and the actual politicians are also with, like, kind of at war with each other. Yeah, it's not, it's not a, it's not like the Grasslands where right. all of the chiefs are in conjunction and they work together to achieve 
Right. Fucking. They have different factions within Zexen, and they have their own, you know, goals, and they're kind of working towards those personal goals rather than the good of all of Zexen. Yeah, and again, the as we've seen in Hugo's chapter, the um, the merchants are really like a profit-based community, of and course. the Zexen Council is a merchant guild. Pretty much. They are nothing but merchants centered around the the like getting funds to like themselves. They only see profits. So, Chris is now acting commander of the Zexen Knights. Instead of, uh, you know, a full captain. Like, she's not, she's only acting captain because the other two captains before this chapter even started were killed by Grassland forces. So now we're, they've proposed the peace treaty that was brought up in, uh, in Hugo's chapter. So the right. message has been sent over there. And we see two of the Grassland clans have already... Right. Um, oh, so we should, we should just quickly mention that the Grasslanders are not all humans. Um, yeah. The Duck Clan is one of the six clans of the Grasslands. The so, Lizard Clan. The ch ch here's, ch here's where uh, we got to butt heads a little bit. Now, in all actuality, it is better to say certainly. Because, you know, it's your duty. It's all this other shit. But we've seen that Chris has reservations about the Zexan Council. She yeah. doesn't agree with them. So, let's do this. So, she wants, basically, to honor the captain... The uh, previous captains. The previous captains and the vice captains and stuff that, you know, this generally, this is what they do in the Zexan. And they think that she fucking wants to solidify her position as the new captain. Right. Which, so, of course, she gets madly offended at because that's not her intention. Uh -huh. She already stated what her intention was, and obviously they didn't even fucking listen to her. But Chris still gives thanks. Because, again, she loves the Zexan people, but she doesn't get along with the council. Yeah. The council's only in it for themselves. They're selfish people, so it's it's really difficult to get behind them. And she can see how selfish they are right up uh -huh. front. And once again, they're already scheming. Right. It, it definitely looks that way, doesn't it? So they're already planning for Chris to fucking die. Yeah. They want her to fail. Yeah. So that they can immortalize her as a fucking hero. Right. And it looks so better it, on them, and then they get another And it's also figurehead. kind of a bit like propaganda, you know? Like, oh, look, they died for us, and look at, you know, all this shit, and it's like, um, that's not my intention at all. What the fuck? It's just like Buddhism. Yeah. Buddha never wanted people to actually worship him, but here we are today, so. Yep. So, here's a synopsis. Oh, wait, no, right, she says it to the other knights, my bad. Yeah, but... They said our place was on the battlefield. I, I was close. I, I couldn't remember the exact line, but... Um, yeah, Chris is like, okay, you want me on the battlefield? Bitch, I'll be on the battlefield. Just you watch. Because Chris, Chris understands how to play the game. This is one of the reasons why I really like her. Is she is well aware of what's going on. And she kind of knows how to play the field. It's like an elaborate game of chess for her. So she's like, oh, I'm, I'm the knight piece. All right, I know how to play this role. But she also knows a lot more than just that. So before going into our house, which will move along the plot, what I want to do is you'll see that I have 20,000 pots. Um, and, you know, she's a knight. And good actual equipment. So what I would like to do is I have a fair amount of skill, but I also have this, I think, is the bat. Swing and repel are both bad. Um, so Chris is 95% physical. She is a very physical fucking character. As you would expect of a knight. She is only like a 5%, I think, magician. So what I want to do first is I want to talk to you. And I want to talk to you. I'm, I don't know why talking to... Um, Melville? No, I just talked to Melville. Uh, Elliot. I don't know why talking to Elliot doesn't do anything. He just kind of stutters and nothing happens. 
So because he's flustered that the silver fucking maiden, the real one, oh, what? is talking to him. They won't him. let me go. They, they'll let me exit the door, but they won't let me go in the door. So what I want to do, I I better be able to fucking yeah, pass. Bitch, what? What the fuck? Shouldn't have even talked. How dare you talk to me? <laughs> How dare you speak to me? <laughs> Okay, so there's two places that we can actually enter inside the place that no one else can actually enter. So we have the medicine shop, which if you really wanted, you could buy a Jizo because you have the fucking money. But I would just buy one antitoxin, one I, medicine. I still find it like hilarious that they just kept it as Jizo and didn't explain it like at all. Okay, so there's no rarities, unfortunately. I can spend 90% of my funds to get a uh, new armor. You don't need it. What I wanted to do was potentially, this also gives you added movement speed on the field, which is good for Chris, but I can get it for free later, so I don't really care. Uh, what I wanted to do was I wanted to, uh, not a fix, buy. Uh, don't have it? Yeah, they don't sell it here. All right, I'll buy a gross and that'll be that. Okay. You can buy, um... Isn't it a goss? There's no R in that. Oh, it is goss. Sorry, my bad. I don't know why I said gross. I don't know! You always add words or letters where they don't belong. I know, I don't get it. Um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to buy a water room for Chris. Right. But it's not necessary, and I believe in Brass Castle I can buy one, probably for cheaper. Um, but the more important thing in here, if I could get over here, <laughs> is there is a Bujitsu teacher. And I want to do is show you the last skill that Chris can get. She is bad at Holy Dash. And you would think because you have a learned skill, you should learn this because I'm 90% physical. Don't actually. It does not benefit you in any single way. It only goes up to rank C and there's no point. So what you would probably do is because Perry is fucking amazing, you would get Perry. I would actually prefer if you really wanted to, um, Mage studies, there we go. <laughs> that is so fucking hilarious what? to me. Uh, those drills that the knights were doing uh -huh. are katana drills. Yes. That is definitely not how you would practice a broadsword stroke. So you'll notice that Chris is really bad. Really bad, except for Sword of Magic. She's really bad at everything but water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna teach her water magic. <laughs> This is the funniest thing you've ever said in the whole entire life. What? Because you're basically saying Chris is definitely not adapt for water or magic no, at no, all. No, no, no. And I'm going to teach her just that. No, no, no. She's bad at everything but water magic and sword of magic. So I'm going to teach her water magic because I don't think that she needs any more offense. Like physical offense. And that's what sword of magic is. Gotcha. So water magic actually makes her into a very competent healer. Now, Chris's magic stat is terrible. Don't get me wrong. It's not good. In fact, it will never really be good. But what you can do is you can sort of supplement it. Oh, I also want to get trading stuff. That's the last thing I want to do for this episode. Um, <laughs> water magic allows virtually Chris to become an immovable tank once you uh, level up Ooh, this is also a thing I need to check. Um, oh my god. Once you level up armor protect. Rarity? Rarity? Ugh. Oh. God damn it. I'm really hoping for them to have um, a specific type of armor that allows Chris to defend against lightning magic. Which she would probably be bad at with water magic. Yeah. Right? It's, I don't know if the triangle works in this game. It's supposed to. It is supposed to. But I don't know if it's like, it, it fully works. So personally, if Chris has armor protect and um, and a healing room, then she can, they're not gonna tell me anything, but I know for a fact that crystal ball is good and candle is good. Wait, no, not one. Seven, I wanna buy seven candles. I wanna buy as many deer antlers as I can. Uh, so three, I didn't realize how many you had. And that's that. Crystal ball? Uh, yeah, they were sold out. Oh. I wanted to buy a crystal ball, but they won't let me. Which is fine. So I'm gonna check the armor shop. And then I'm going to 
virtually that's that's where this episode gets to end. Um, come on. Yeah, he calls her sis, which is hilarious. <sighs> it's not happening. Nothing is is better here, as an FYI. It is worth mentioning though that he can potentially give you a thunder chainmail. Um, it's very rare to happen, so I don't I didn't expect it to happen, but it would have been nice, and it would have basically basically uh, made it so that I would never have to upgrade Chris's armor for a while. So what I'm gonna do is, yeah, I'm gonna put this all the way to seven. Bang, clunk, bang. And her weapon immediately becomes Steindetch. All of her weapons are German, uh, famous German swords. I don't remember what her last one is, but it is, once I hear it again, it'll be. Which honestly goes in with the theme because Zexen has a very German feel about it. Yeah. All the houses, even her hairstyle, that's, that's like a I, very German hairstyle. Well, at least um, European for sure. No, that's that's a very German hairstyle in particular. Okay, um, well, at any rate, yeah, basically. there we go. Um, I'm gonna take a, a bit to save here, and then we'll rest for free at our house. I'm not actually gonna rest here, because there's no point. Um, so that's all for this edition of Let's Play. Swig it in three. Genso Suiko in three. <laughs> this is Bandit Ryu. And Karana Shizumi. See you next time with Chris. Bye.